Well, then perhaps Pastor Cho might like a rest. Then it would be Assistant Pastor Eric. Before Rami Malek appeared on 24, as well as the Steven Spielberg produced miniseries The Pacific, eventually starring as the lead on Mr. Robot. Or maybe it's that it feels like all our heroes are counterfeit. The world itself is just one big hoax. Spamming each other with our running commentary bullshit. Before Remy Malik amassed a giant social media following with over 600,000 followers on Twitter, as well as 2.7 million on Instagram at the time of this recording. Wait, the guy's only got like three pictures. What's up with that? Before Remy was a talk show regular, even taking selfies with Ellen DeGeneres. Aww. Thank you. Thank you. Before Rami Malek replaced Sasha Baron Cohen as Freddie Mercury in the Queen biopic Bohemian Rhapsody, earning him his first Academy Award. Rami, Rami Malek! To everyone who has had a hand in, in getting me here. Before Rami fell right off the Oscar stage after giving his acceptance speech. People nearby rushed to help him up. EMTs were even called to the scene. Thankfully, the 37-year-old actor was seemingly cleared. Once upon a time, Rami Malek was working as a pizza delivery man in Los Angeles. He was also living in a cramped two-bedroom apartment, but he would do whatever he could to make it. This included placing his headshots and resume into envelopes, and he would tape them to the bottom of each pizza box that he would deliver. You know, I guess you gotta get people's attention somehow. This is just one of the many crazy stories actors have from their days of desperation. But for most thespians, winning an Oscar isn't even a slight possibility. Most are lucky to like, you know, get a paying job. Well, Rami Malek, he is definitely an exception. Landing his first role on Gilmore Girls back in 2004, the LA native moved on to film roles in Night at the Museum, Battleship, Twilight, The Master, and more. His TV roles in The War at Home in 24, they were notable, but it was his performance as Snafu in the Pacific which showed the world that this was an actor to look out for. Receiving a Bachelor of Fine Arts at the University of Evansville in 2003, well, Rami had been preparing for the moment when he would finally get his big break. Now, this came when he was cast in 2015 as computer hacker Elliot Alderson on Mr. Robot. Now for this, he snagged a Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series. Now while his performance on the show has been acclaimed, well nobody was prepared for the impact he would have when he took on the role of Freddie Mercury in Bohemian Rhapsody. However, it's not just the actor's wins that are an interesting part of his legacy. You won't believe some of the roles he was actually in the running for roles he was sometimes passed on because of his Middle Eastern heritage. Now, Rami said that there were many auditions starting out where he knew he'd be rejected for reasons beyond his acting ability. As a result, well, he was forced to play several stereotypical roles. It may or may not have been this factor that cost him a lead part on a certain gangster HBO show. Either way, that didn't stop him from getting a fateful meeting with two of Hollywood's biggest legends. What's going on guys? It's your boy Michael Bucretton documenting the life and career of Remy Malik prior to fame. Here for you, of course, on Before They Are Famous. Then we're dropping this video here on my second channel because we've been doing a little bit of A-list Hollywooders over here. <clears throat> A-list Hollywood verse. That's not even a real word. Maybe that's why this is on my second channel. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. We got a lot to get through. This is a, a really fantastic story. We also recently dropped one on Bradley Cooper. Be sure to check that out. Now let's get into Rami Malek. Excuse me for the, that's why I didn't make it in Hollywood. You know, not perfect. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom. At first I thought I must be sick. And so I started to check my pulse. And that's when I noticed the piece of scalp. Rami Saeed Malik was born on May 12, 1981 in Los Angeles, California. He and his twin brother Sammy, they were born to Father Saeed, an insurance salesman, and Nelly, an accountant. Now, both of Rami's parents, they hail from Cairo, Egypt. His father worked as a tour guide in the city and wished to come to the United States after doing business with American tourists. Now, his mother at the time, she was not into the idea of leaving her birthplace and commenting on her journey, Rami stated. She did not want to leave. She had family and friends right next door and it was hard to give that up for a city like LA. That can sometimes feel estranged from neighborhood to neighborhood. 
She took some convincing, but the couple, they eventually made the move. They settled in Sherman Oaks, a district in the San Fernando Valley, where they first gave birth to Rami's older sister, Yasmin. Now the actor, he is a twin brother and they have an interesting relationship, one that Rami has been more than happy to discuss over the years. Sammy has been a constant supporter of his brother's career, so it's, it must be nice having a twin. What did you think to see your brother up there and accept that award tonight? Come on. I tell you, I'm, I'm speechless, but at the same time, I, I, I kind of figured my boy had it in the bag. One particular story from their younger years that Rami has shared on numerous talk shows is when Sammy needed to learn a Greek monologue, something Rami was studying as an aspiring actor. Now, what was at stake? Well, Sammy needed to recite the monologue in class in order to complete his degree. Now, he did what any responsible student would do. He got his twin brother to go in there, posing as him, and to recite the monologue. Who wouldn't do it? Now, while it seemed to be going well, well, his teacher, she had her doubts. Uh. <laughs> I deliver this monologue in front of the entire lecture hall and I get a few and she goes, how did you learn how to do that? And I go, um, it's just a hobby. <laughs> Rami and his siblings, they were brought up to honor and appreciate their Egyptian heritage. His father would sometimes wake him up in the middle of the night to talk on the phone with his relatives halfway across the globe. Now this helped him work on his Arabic. Now being the child of immigrants put Rami at odds with the kids at school. Many of his classmates, they would tease him and mispronounce his name. The cultural differences of the Malik family, they were visible to American kids. I mean, the sandwiches he brought to school, they're apparently quite the sight to fellow students in the cafeteria. My peanut butter and jelly was like a salami and feta cheese sandwich with, with olives in it. And the kids would be like, oh, the Maliks are eating uh, cockroaches today. The immigrant mentality was always present in the Malik household. Now, Rami's parents, they wanted their children to be doctors and lawyers, as this was their idea of success in America. Now, Rami, he lived a fairly sheltered life in Sherman Oaks, which gave him a very limited perspective of his future possibilities. Now, for someone with such easy access to Hollywood, he surprisingly didn't want to be an actor right away. Reflecting on his childhood, he stated, I never thought about being an actor when I was a kid. I lived in the valley, and I don't think I ever went over the hill into Hollywood or Beverly Hills until I was in high school. I didn't even know it existed as far as I was concerned. It was the valley, Sherman Oaks, Van Nuys. That's all I knew. Rami would spend much of his time as a kid creating characters with peculiar voices. Attending Notre Dame High School in Sherman Oaks, Rami was in the same year as actress Rachel Bilson, as well as one year above Kirsten Dunst. So. I don't know if everybody knows we went to high school together. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, you remember? Yeah, I'm not that okay. old. <laughs> Can you imagine? He and Kirsten, they performed together in musical theater class at Notre Dame High. Now, during a variety segment years later, when the two actors interviewed one another, well, Rami recalled first seeing Kirsten playing the piano, and he fell in love with her talent. In another interview, well, he went on to admit. We are still friends, yeah. Used to have a little crush on her. You have a crush or you have a crush? I had. She, she... Of course, to this day, Notre Dame High School is vocal in their pride for both actors. Now, when the two got nominated for Golden Globes in 2016, the school even congratulated them on their Facebook page. While Rami was interested in acting, he didn't always see that as a feasible career. Following his parents' wishes of choosing a career as a lawyer, he found himself on the debating team. Realizing that he had trouble forming an argument, his teacher told him that he was better at dramatic interpretation. She convinced him to perform a one-man show called Zoomin and the Sign. Performing the play with family in the crowd, well, he felt that acting was the right choice for him. Talking about his experience on stage, well, Rami has stated, I still love being on stage. There's a thrill to it that never goes away. It always feels different, and the response you get from the audience is just so visceral. With film and TV, you have to wait to see what people think, and right there, that connection with an audience is like nothing else. Rami's first ever audition was for a play in high school called The Miracle Worker. He graduated from Notre Dame in 1999, moving on to the University of Evansville, Indiana, where he would study theater. After college in 2003, Rami moved back to Los Angeles, where he would give professional acting a go. You would not believe us. Living in a small cramped apartment, he took up work as a pizza delivery guy. Remember how I said he'd deliver resumes with the pizzas? Well, he actually ended up getting an audition out of it. 
It, uh, it was for an Eminem commercial, and it was one he didn't get, but still. In 2004, he landed his first TV role as Andy on Gilmore Girls, and this may have been one of his more interesting roles starting out, as he would later be typecast as one-dimensional Middle Eastern stereotypes. Now, this included a pharaoh in Night at the Museum, and even a terrorist in the show 24. Yeah, speaking about this, he stated, in the past, it was like, oh, well, he's an acceptable terrorist. He's an accessible terrorist. But after I did that, I said to myself, you know what? No more. This is not how I want it. Rami was determined to prove to big time Hollywood casting agents that he could play more than just racial stereotypes. Being passed up for the role of Jimmy Darmody on HBO's Boardwalk Empire, well, he received a callback from another audition he did. Although this was no ordinary callback. The person on the other line was Tom Hanks. The actor told Rami that he would love him for the role of Snafu on the World War II miniseries, which was known, of course, as the Pacific. It turns out that Tom, he loved the actor's haunting eyes and he wanted him to come in to test in front of him personally. Now entering the audition room, he noticed another familiar face behind the camera. Well, this, this person was a little bit older, uh, you know, quite a bit older, silver haired kind of uh, gentleman. <laughs> and halfway through I go, uh, holy sh that's Stevens. Rami eventually landed the role and shooting the series in Australia, the actor was no longer being typecast. Now this was finally a part he could sink his teeth into. Putting on the uniform of a World War II Marine during the Battle of the Pacific, well Rami's performance as Snafu is one he considers his breakthrough role. But of course, it was only the beginning. Got a smoke. As for the rest of the story, well, hey, you're gonna have to go and find it elsewhere because this is before they are famous. My name is Michael McCrudden, and we make all sorts of celebrity bios here for you on this channel. So let us know who you want us to document next in the comments down below. We are watching this on my second channel. We need all the help we can get. If you guys wanna hit subscribe, very much appreciate it. Share this video with uh, a Rami Malik fan or friend. You know, all right, see you guys in another. Oh, let me know who's next as well down below. Ah, I went from being so professional to now just talking. Talking at my ass. I was always typecast as a bouncer. Just, just gonna put that out there. Hey, okay, bye. Boom.